Hey guys, how's it going? In this video, I'll be showing you how you can do photogrammetry flight planning inside of EGCS. I'll try to cover things such as planning the single grid photogrammetry mission, as well as planning a double grid oblique photogrammetry mission. So without any further ado, let's get started. As you can see, I already have my GCS screen open here. And start, you can click here on this plus button to create a new route. So then in this window, I'll now be creating a new route from scratch. But if you already have some KML or CSV file from which you already want to import your route, then you can select that in this step. So I'm just going to click on next now and then choose what drone I'll be using. I'll be using the DJI M350 drone. So I will just select uh, that and then click on done. And so now I can already get started with the route flight planning. You can see that now on the left side of the screen, I have a bunch of tools which I can use. But in this case, I'll be using uh, specifically the photogrammetry tool. So then select that. Let's go here into basic parameters and then let's choose what camera we want to use. So in this case, I'll be using the H20 camera, so I will select that. But if you're using some other camera, such as the P1 camera or maybe some other custom camera, then you can select that. And so now with that done, we can already put the points on the map. So to add the points on the map, you can either double click or just hold the shift button and click to add your points just like so. So I'm just going to mark out this area initially. You can see there's also some curve that goes along this road. So let's kind of try to follow that. So that looks good. Uh, let's press on enter and you can see that now our photogrammetry grid is already complete, at least the initial grid. Now I'll just make some more adjustments to make this grid exactly like I want it to be. So I'll take this point, drag it out just a bit, maybe even place it a bit further. So it's uh, also somewhere near the middle of the road. I'll do the same over here, maybe move these two points down just a bit. Let's see how the uh, grid is looking like. Okay, so already here actually it looks quite good. So now uh, let's uh, take a look at what actions we can actually adjust in here. So to do that, let's go here into the actions tab and you can see that here we already have the set camera bed distance, which is added in here by default. And one more thing I'd recommend you to add is the set camera attitude. So in this case, we can adjust the camera tilt. So this we can set to 90 degrees. So just enter 90 in there and then hit enter. So this means that uh, as soon as the mission starts, the drone will already put the camera 90 degrees downwards on the very first waypoint of the photogrammetry mission. So if you now take a look at the uh, top bar that's over here, you can see we now have only this one photogrammetry segment. But depending on from where you want to start the mission, there's a trick you can do to make the mission start from the nearest point of where you're going to be taking off from. So to do that, you can use this add first waypoint segment. And let's just click on that and then just click somewhere on the map to add it. And so now actually you can see that it basically snaps the closest corner of where your photogrammetry mission will start from. So this means that if, for example, you want to start from here, then it's better to place the first waypoint there. Then the GCS actually will automatically calculate the mission in such a way that it will start from this point. So let's maybe zoom in here a bit. So let's say maybe we have our car parked somewhere over here and the drone uh, will be taking off from this location. So then I will just be placing that first point here. And so I suggest that whenever you know where you will be taking off from, you, you place the first waypoint uh, near the drone's takeoff location. So also now, once we have added our first waypoint to the mission, if you want, you can also actually add another waypoint at the very end after the photogram tree. So here uh, we can just click on the waypoint tool and then we can zoom in here and then just add another waypoint in here. And so this will just then make the drone return back after it's done with the photogrammetry mission. So it will automatically come back to the, its uh, takeoff location. Now, once that is done, we can open up the elevation profile and just look at some overall data about the mission. So we can see the total estimated duration will be around five kilometers. Total duration of the flight will be about 16 minutes and 40 seconds. Weapon count 33 and you can also here see the minimum and the maximum altitudes of the flight. By default, the GCS will be following the terrain with an AGL tolerance of 3 meters. But if you want to adjust this, then you can just go here into the advanced parameters and then adjust this value to make uh, the flight plan follow the terrain a bit closer. So in this case, if we change the AGL tolerance to one meter, now you can see our waypoint count has increased and the drone will follow the terrain even more accurately. Now, maybe let's go through all the parameters and see what they do exactly. So here in the basic parameters, first, of course, you can see you have your camera selector. After that is followed by the ground resolution parameter. So if we increase this, then of course, this will bring the route's altitude higher and vice versa. If we decrease it, then the route's altitude will go lower. 
But so essentially you should set this based on uh, how much detail you want to see in the resulting map and in the images that you will collect. The flight speed here by default will be set to five meters. So you can set that faster. And then of course, if you want to cover larger areas, then you'll be able to do so faster. But keep in mind that as you fly up to larger speed, then the drone images can get more blurry depending on what drone system you are using. So in this case, I'll just keep this set as five meters. But like I said, you can go higher or lower depending on your needs. Uh, the default overlap settings are 60 and 30, but uh, these are really the minimum settings. I would probably suggest using something like 80% forward overlap and 70% side overlap. This should give you quite good results when you do your uh, map stitching. The turn type here is set to stop and turn. For all DJI drones, I would recommend to use adaptive bank turn instead, because this will ensure that the drone will not stop at each separate waypoint, that the drone will just fly through the waypoints without stopping. Altitude mode here is set to Smart AGL. So Smart AGL essentially means that the drone will keep a constant distance even in challenging terrain conditions. But if you're flying over a flat area, then actually you can set this to either AGL or even AMSL. For example, if I set this now here to AGL, you will see how the uh, resulting flight plan changes in the elevation profile. Now let's go into the advanced tab. So here you can see we already have the AGL tolerance parameter, which we just now adjusted. Uh, then we have the direction angle. So this is just usually set using this arrow that's here. So if you want the survey lines to be uh, in this direction, you can just set this like so, or just manually enter, for example, 90 degrees in here. So in case you want the drone to also uh, overextend over your planned area a bit, you can also use the overshoot parameter. So when you use the overshoot parameter, let's say, uh, let's set it to 20 meters. Then if we now zoom in, you can see that actually the drone overextends over the planned area boundary by those 20 meters. And if you also want the drone to fly a bit slower in those uh, cases, then you can also set a bit slower uh, flight speed. So for example, if you would have the overall uh, flight plan set at five meters per second, and we wanted the drone to fly a bit slower, then we would just simply set something like two meters per second or three in the overshoot uh, settings. But in this case, I'll uh, not I won't be using the overshoot, so I'll just uh, use the normal grid that the GCS plans based on our area size. Uh, next up, also quite uh, important, this is the action execution. So here you can see I have it set to every point. And there's also two other options. It's at start and at only forward passes. So what does this mean? This means that all of the actions which you have set here in your photogrammetry tool. So in this case, we have the set camera by distance and the set camera attitude to move it 90 degrees downwards. So this sets at what points will those actions be executed? For example, if you set it to forward passes, this means that the drone will collect images only on the forward passes and will not collect any of the images at the turning points. So actually in this case, I will set it uh, to this setting so that the drone only collects the images on the forward passes. But typically I would suggest using either this or using the setting at every point. So then there are some other settings which you can also adjust. One of them is the double grid. This will show in uh, just a bit. Also, there's additional waypoints. So basically, once you have the additional waypoints uh, checked, then this means that at every point where the drone is supposed to take an image, you can have a waypoint set there. This can be useful for some cases where, for example, uh, you might want to have the drone stop at each of the point when you will be taking uh, an image. But in, in just standard case, when you want the drone to be flying without stopping and taking images, this setting is not really uh, necessary. If you want to see some more detailed information about your planned uh, route, then you can do so by clicking here on this uh, green checkbox. And then you'll see this route log appear, which will show you some more information, such as the total area covered, uh, the size of the camera footprint, uh, the total number of waypoints, as well as the number of passes over the area, as well as what action uh, is used for triggering the camera, which also will include how many shots you will get from this flight. So for example, here you can see that automatically it calculates that we will be getting about 1,481 shots if we fly at this altitude, which in this case is uh, 27 meters. If we were to, for example, increase the ground resolution to two centimeters, then now you can see that actually the AGL altitude has been increased two times. 
And so now with this setting, we'll only be taking 400 shots. So the route summary can be very useful when you're planning your mission because it gives you some critical information, uh, especially regarding the number of images taken by the camera, because this will greatly change depending on your overlap settings, as well as the ground resolution parameters you have set. And so this is essentially a single grid for the Gram Tree mission. Let's go ahead and actually rename this route to single grid. Now I'm going to show you how you can also use actually the same mission and just transform it so that it flies double grid instead and you can collect some oblique imagery. So firstly, I will go in here on these three dots and then I'll just click on duplicate. So now you can see we already have a second route and then I'll just go here. I'll rename this to double grid. Then once we have that, then I'll take and just uh, toggle off the visibility of the original route. So we can only work now with the double grid route. And then once we have that, actually uh, transforming it is really easy. You just go here into the advanced settings and you check the double grid option. That's uh, step number one. And then step number two is that you go here in actions and then where you have the camera tilt parameter, you can just change this into 45. So now then with this mission, the drone will do a uh, survey of this area with the camera set at 45 degree angle and it will do a double grid. So this means that if you fly both of these missions, then you'll get enough images to construct a quite accurate 3D model of uh, this urban space. If you want also at this point, you can change the overlap. So for example, for the oblique images, you can set this at maybe 80 and 80% 80 overlap or also maybe you want to use instead of using 45 degrees, you want to use some other uh, value here such as 60 degrees for example in this case as well you can see how many shots in total will be taken by the camera how often will the shots be taken so you can see the set camera by distance is by default set on the auto setting so in this case every 12 meters uh, the shot will be taken if you want to change this you can always uncheck the auto setting and then you can manually select the exact number in meters how often you want the image to be taken Alternatively, if you want to use also set camera by time instead of set camera by distance, you can do that just by going here and then adding the set camera by time setting. But for uh, photogrammetry in general, uh, I would suggest just using the set camera by time because that works uh, better in most situations. So and now we can uh, see both for planned missions, so both the single grid as well as the double grid photogrammetry. For those of you using custom cameras on your drone, let's say if you're using M300 or M350 drone with a uh, custom camera on it, I'll also show you how you can uh, add your camera to the drone. So to do that, you need to go in here in the menu and then go to the main menu. Next here, go into the profile section and find the drone that you are using. In my case, that's the M350 drone. Then you can go here into edit. And if uh, your camera is already inside of UGCS, you can just click here on add and then choose the camera that you want to use. So for example, we can search for Sony camera and uh, we want to be using the Sony A7R4 camera with the 35 millimeter lens. So now let's just select this camera click on select and after it has been added there, let's just click here on save. In case you're using some other camera, which is not in GCS by default, you can go here into the payload section, click on create new, enter all of your camera parameters. And then in the previous step, uh, you can just select your own custom camera. But now let's go back here and then we should already be able to choose the Sony camera. So then let's click on the drop down menu and you can see that now the Sony camera profile is available for the M350 drone. So let's just select that. You can see that the uh, altitude of the flight has been increased just because now we're using a uh, different camera. So now let's move this a bit lower. So let's, for example, set the GSD value to something like 0 0.5. And in this case, you can see what is the AGL altitude. So that you can see that if we're using the Sony camera with uh, the GSD of 0.5, then we'll be getting flight altitude of about 46 meters. We can also now open up the elevation profile and you can see here how the uh, flight overall would be looking like. So that's it for this video. Hopefully it was useful for you. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments section below and I'll see you in the next one.